I want to bring in also now Major Samartur, former UN peacekeeper. He's joining us on this broadcast. Major Tour, very, very worrying news coming in from Ukraine of uh, fighting that's happening now at a nuclear power plant, at an active nuclear power plant. Now, at this point, there is a lot of alarm out there, a lot of panic. I want you to set the record straight for us as to uh, exactly what it means if there's a fire within the premises. Is there a reason to be alarmed right now? Uh, well, ma'am, uh, Jai to all viewers. Uh, well, firstly, if there is a fire within the premises of, of a uh, thermal nuclear power plant, I do not think it's a matter of uh, really grave concern because the moment these uh, uh, structures are uh, constructed, so the thickness of these walls are so immense and they've taken lessons from the disaster at Chernobyl. Because the thickness of the walls, if you go and check on Wikipedia and the history of the Chernobyl plant, the thickness and the concrete that they used was of not very good quality. So that is the reason that with the blast, everything had broken up and crumbled. But after the lessons learned, these, this nuclear reactor was made after the Chernobyl uh, disaster. So they are more fortified. They have better material put into it for the constructions. Thickness of their walls are, are immensely uh, well done up. In case of an explosion, they are going to uh, take in the impact in case there is an explosion. So it is not an alarming situation. It is a fire. And it, as per procedure and drills, there are firefighting practices carried out on a regular basis. So if an RT shell has landed, Definitely not in a crucial area of the thermal reactor, but in the premises. I seriously feel it is not a matter of grave concern. But yes, from a humanitarian point of view, these facilities should be neutral and should not be put under threat or under attack by any of the forces whatsoever. Agreed. And that's what Ukraine has been highlighting, saying that in the course of this war, for the first time ever, you've got a country attacking a nuclear unit as well. Ukraine has been highlighting that to say the world must come together. Major Thur, you're saying that right now as things stand, you don't see it being a big problem with regards to leading to any sort of radiation leak. What to you would be a situation then that is alarming? If the fire spreads perhaps? Uh, because, you know, what we always hear about, and this is for someone, uh, a layman like me essentially, what we hear about in these power plants uh, is that if the temperatures go up, these reactors are very sensitive to temperature. Ma'am, see, if there is a penetration into the walls of the reactor, which are very thick, they can take uh, uh, n number of RT shell, uh, shells onto them. And despite that, they will uh, not penetrate into the reactor. So as far as the RT shell landing onto the reactor is not, an, uh, not a problem at the moment. But yes. In case they are not able to handle the fire and the fire spreads and their critical control units, which are electron electronically controlling the function of the power plant, of the thermal power plant, if there is a malfunction in that, yes, then we are definitely anticipating and looking at a probable nuclear disaster. And uh, there are uh, all emergency units should be on standby at the moment. Uh, Major and this, also this nuclear yeah. reactor is uh, based next to a water body, uh, exactly. next to the Niper River. And to the left, uh, to the right side is Mariupol. And to the left is Odessa. So it is in between these two key points, these two key cities. So it is strategically located. And there, uh, if in case there is a disaster, it is going to affect the world on a biblical level because there's going to be a lot of contamination because it's right next to a water body. So what I can say is what we experienced in Fukushima in Japan, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactor. Mm -hmm. So it took them probably months to shut it down and get control over the radiations. So I uh, am definitely anticipating and fearing that, the, yes, if the fire spreads, it's a matter of very grave and serious concern. But I'm sure they are capable enough of dousing the fire and Russians being aware of the history of Chernobyl disaster, how it unfolded, I am sure both sides are mature enough not to escalate uh, the fighting near and around this facility. 
But what's rather worrying is the fact that reports are coming in right now, Major Thur, uh, that there are, uh, you know, emergency teams on standby. None of them are being allowed inside. And that's the point that you're also making, that Russia for sure recognizes what kind of repercussions this will have for the world. You know, the point that you also mentioned about how if there is, if, and that's a big if, if there is a radiation leak, uh, you've got the Naipur River right there. In almost every single such incident of a nuclear accident of a radiation leak, we've seen it essentially causing maximum damage because it seeps into these water bodies, it seeps into the soil, and then that entire area becomes completely inhabitable, like what we saw in Chernobyl as well uh, in 1986. All of this being kept in mind, do you think, especially with all countries now stepping in, the United States, the United Kingdom, all of them calling on Russia to kind of back off, do you think that's going to happen or Russia will go all out to ensure they capture this nuclear power plant? Ma'am, uh, see, this is the biggest and the largest uh, nu uh, uh, nuclear power plant in the whole of Europe. So it definitely is a key target for Russia not to attack and destroy but to occupy and secure. So whatever is unfolded is definitely a fight happening to take over this facility. Because after they take over this, uh, the majority of the electricity is going to be under the control of the Russians. So it is definitely after taking over this facility by the Russians, it is having a very tactical advantage for the future operations to unfold. And Russia can, after taking this facility, have the countries sit on the table for talks. That is exactly what is happening right now as we speak. That US has come in, uh, UK has given a very strong condemnation and uh, has offered uh, for talks. So it definitely is a very key and a vital target, which is going to have immense ramifications in the future days to come. And I strongly feel that, yes, it is not going to lead to any disaster at the moment because it is a fire outside the nuclear facility. And I'm very sure that there are systems, automa automated systems also in place for dousing these fires. And as far as the fighting is concerned, we really need to get a, a live up update as to the cameras uh, panning onto this site mm -hmm. uh, so that we can actually confirm whether the fighting is actually on or it is ceased for the moment. Uh, Major Thur, you know, I just want to, you to also explain to our viewers what are the kind of measures that are taken in a power plant, uh, lessons learned perhaps from a Chernobyl, to ensure that that kind of an accident can't happen, that kind of a radiation leak can't happen for these circumstances of a fire within the unit. What are the steps that are taken to ensure it doesn't spread and, you know, hit the reactors? Ma'am, now the, see, uh, Chernobyl, the uh, findings have found out that the, it was a faulty structure, the construction part, the material used was not of high standard. So after the Chernobyl incident, these reactors which are now constructed are of very high quality reinforced concrete and cement. Then the thick, thickness are uh, immense. So if there is a blast within the core of the reactor as well, so the outer cover and the protection onto these reactors is so thick that uh, even if an explosion takes place, it is going to take in the impact and is going to curb the effect that we saw in Chernobyl. So uh, I'm sure that uh, with the new engineering techniques and uh, facilities available, these nuclear reactors have been created and uh, their safety procedures are being checked by the I I IAEA, that is the International At Atomic Energy Association which is monitored by the United Nations. So the IAEA is going to also, it regularly inspects these facilities to check their safety standards mm -hmm. and the upgradation time to time. So definitely there is no compromise in the standard of these facilities. They are under constant United Nations watch and monitoring. So I feel that uh, as of now, uh, uh, the only saving grace would be that the, uh, that the fire is doused and the fighting is seized at the moment. That is the need of the hour. I, I, I truly, I truly hope that is the case, uh, Major Thor. None of us want this to blow up into a full-blown uh, nuclear crisis because then it's out of anyone's control. And as Major Thor also said, the entire world will suffer. A radiation leak 
is not a small matter. It, it seriously, seriously affects human life for years to come. And it's not just immediate effects. It goes on for generations. What radiation does to your body based on previous nuclear accidents, it essentially, and it's horrifying, it cooks human cells from within. Dangerous levels of radiation can create serious problems because it weakens and damages the DNA as well, which is what I mean by it affecting generations of humanity. It leads to damaging cell mutations as well. Every generation going forward has some default or another. It massively also raises cancer threat in many stories from Chernobyl, from other nuclear sites. When people were exposed to these radiation levels, what inevitably happened is while they didn't show immediate problems, they then developed problems like cancer, diseases like cancer. It causes large-scale cell death, which means that your entire life term is cut short tragically. It damages organs, it damages bone marrow, uh, and uh, has huge, huge effects, repercussions on a human body. It causes birth defects as well as deaths. That's what I was talking about. People's life being cut short by many years, by 20, 30 years, birth defects for the next generation as well. This is why the world as such cannot afford to have any sort of nuclear accident or a radiation leak.